Good morning, guys. I'm here in Baghdad. We got an early start to the morning. It's not so hot yet. I'm a little tired. I was up kind of late last night. We are here for breakfast. Gahi. Gahi and Cameron. Hello. Good morning. This uh, looks delicious. Thank you. Good. Yeah, let's try it. I'll rip some off here. Juice just stripping off of it. Oh my goodness. Okay, so take some of this and you just scoop it up. Boom. Wow, that is so good. Really good. So flaky and sweet, but not like overpowering this sweet. It kind of reminds me of like fried dough that you get at like the carnival in the States. This is made from buffalo meat. This is really good. <laughs> I really like it. All right, let's go take a look inside at the production. Assalamu alaikum, sabah Wow. That's big. Big oven, oh my goodness. And this is the sweet? Ah, okay. And the whole production from start to finish in the big oven. Thank you so much, shukran. <laughs> Guys, I just found out this place was opened in 1957. Unbelievable. You? Wow. And there's the bags of the sweet syrup for takeaway. Right out of the bucket. <laughs> Guys, the tea in Iraq, I can already tell, is going to be very sweet. Look at all that sugar at the bottom. Mm, very sweet. Very tasty. We're seeing some of the men at this tea stall drink the spillover from the dish like this. So do as the locals do. <laughs> Alright guys, so we're here in Tahrir Square. Same name as the one in Egypt and also very important here in Baghdad. Uh, this is where mass protests occurred in 2019. There was uh, some violence and so as a result it's a pretty sensitive area. There are a ton of police and military here and we've been instructed not to film them. So unfortunately I can't really give you a good view of it but let me just do a quick twirl. I'll show you guys behind me. We're taking some selfies on the street. Here we go. Ah. Oh, wow. I'm getting a nice head massage. <laughs> yes, no. <laughs> We're definitely generating a lot of interest on the streets here. People are asking us to take photos with them, take photos of them, but right now we're heading off to our next spot. Alrighty guys, we're just walking along now. It is Friday morning, which is the holy day here in the Islamic world. So the streets are pretty quiet right now. I think it's only around 8.30. So things are kind of slowly opening up and then later in the day after the Friday prayer, people will be more out and about, I believe. We are walking into an old cinema here. It's so cool. I believe it's from the 50s. Look at the, all the old actors and actresses. When was this open? 1932. 32? Alright, I was wrong. It's even earlier than that. 1932, this place opened. Come in, come in. Come in. <laughs> come in. <laughs> Whoa. Wow. <laughs> That's a cool picture. <laughs> These poses are out of control. I love it. <laughs> so I think this man is a Bollywood aficionado. Uh -huh. All Bollywood Thank you, Shukran. Oh, thank you so much. My friend. <laughs> My friend, thank you. So he's selling these, or what is this shop? He sells what like uh, Indian movie. Uh huh. The Blush to Arabic. Ah, okay, it's okay. Like Guys, we're here in the theater. The power just dropped, which apparently happens every so often here in Baghdad, on and off. But it should be back soon, or a generator. You kind of forget with everything you see on the news about Baghdad, like how historical and how incredible and cultured this city is and has been for hundreds and hundreds of years. Look at all these pop culture references. You got Rick and Morty, you got Sia. Amazing, tons of street art here. Hey guys, right here is the Tigris River, the historic 
legendary river that runs right through the center of Baghdad. Right behind me, if you were to cross that bridge, you would get to the green zone, which is basically a thing that, from what I understand, was set up during the American invasion in 2003 as like a super secure kind of semi-closed off part of the city. A lot of the major foreign embassies are there, including the US embassy. Hopefully we'll be able to get in there at some point. So guys, as I said in my previous video, you'll see a ton of these basically heavily fortified concrete barriers around the city. And I was asking what's behind here and uh, they're saying, not really sure, it's either some kind of a government building or a bank. Uh, but you'll see them all over the place. The nice thing is a lot of them have been painted with all sorts of street art and uh, It's really cool really gives some personality to these You know otherwise imposing concrete walls. All right guys. It's only 9 a.m. But it's already getting starting to get pretty hot <laughs> It's about 103 degrees Fahrenheit or like 39 degrees Celsius already. The really cool thing is though Everywhere we walked we've been outside for about an hour and a half and we've already had people give us free water bottles. We were just walking by the banks of the river and some guy was on the balcony of his house and just threw down like a bunch of water bottles to us and and we had a shopkeeper giving it to us. Amazing. All right guys, we're on the road to the market. Another beautiful old cinema here. And people out and about enjoying this Friday morning. The architecture here is amazing. A lot of it is pretty weathered, but it's so rustic and beautiful. Uh, no, in China. <laughs> Iraq. Miriam. Iraqi, yeah, genuine Iraqi. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, this is the coolest shop tucked into a little alley here. Love finding places like this. All with genuine Iraqi handicrafts. Not from China, as he said. From Iraqi only. From Iraqi only, yes, sir. All right, we got some coffee here. So nice of them. Just the shopkeepers here offered to us. Very hot, very dark. It smells delicious. Mm. Sweet and rich. And you visit in Baghdad, visit to my shop. Of course. I happy. Inshallah. Thank you. Inshallah. Oh, we're happy. Thank you. Very happy. These lovely people have insisted that Janet takes these gifts. Why these are too nice? I feel so bad. She said uh, we are the first foreigners to come to this shop since 2003. Shukran. Shukran. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right, guys, we're at Souk Al Arabi. First time in an Iraqi market here in Baghdad. These are copies, right? How much do you think they sell a pair of sneakers for? $12. Twelve dollars. Wow. <laughs> Thank you. Twelve dollars for a pair of fake Yeezys. Pretty good. Hello. Hello. How are you? Good morning. Welcome. And so I know a lot of you watching this are probably wondering about my impressions and how I'm feeling safety-wise and, and, you know, just what it's like here on the streets. To be honest, it feels pretty similar to other Middle Eastern cities that I've been to, specifically like Egypt, I would say, plus a ton of security guns, Humvees, military vehicles, checkpoints, etc. So it has that same Middle Eastern vibe, but with a lot more security built in. And in terms of how people are interacting with us, everyone is so friendly, so welcoming. A lot of English is uh, being spoken. We're definitely drawing a lot of attention, so that's one thing our tour guides have said, is let's just keep moving. We don't want to hang around one area for too long, just out of an abundance of caution. You know, everything's fine, but they said, let's keep it moving because we do draw a lot of attention. We're like some of the first tourists to come to Iraq in 20 years, so it's unusual. But yeah, so far, so good, I feel totally comfortable walking around here. Iraqis have some of the best hairstyles I've ever seen. And here we've got someone getting a special lightning treatment on the street. Check out this spice shop, guys. Assalamualaikum. Beautiful, wow. Your father, Abu? Ah, wow, amazing. The smell is 
overwhelming, in a good way though. So we're heading deeper into the spice market here. And it's actually a covered market here, which is why it's a little dark in here. And I've gotta say, I'm pretty happy about it. <laughs> nice place to come to cool off. Hello, how are you? Assalamu <laughs> alaikum. Huh? Me? Uh, I'm Ricky. Nice to meet you. Yes. Yeah. How are you? Good, how are you? A lot of people asking where we're from, and uh, I don't know. I've had nothing but positive reactions to telling people I'm American. You were saying, as far as that goes... Most people, when you come in as a tourist, just, just totally fine. Uh, yeah. You're a person, they treat you as a person, they exactly. be as hospitable uh, for you as any other, uh, other, other kind of nationality. And, uh -huh. uh, it's just normal. Right, yeah. yeah. Most people everywhere understand that you know, individuals are individuals. Even if they have, you know, opinions that are negative about whatever government or military, etc. People treat individuals with kindness pretty much everywhere I've ever been in the world. And here is no exception. Temperature update, it is 111 degrees Fahrenheit or 44 degrees Celsius and it is 10.30 in the morning. We're hanging in there. <laughs> Alright guys, we're at the next market that we're exploring. It's the copper market. Take a look. This one is pretty spectacular. Assalamu alaikum. Hi. Good morning. Sabah khair. What do you got there? Show me. Ah, wow. <laughs> bye bye. Masalam. The nice thing about being a tourist in Iraq, one of the many nice things, is that when you come to a souk or a market like this, if you're looking for souvenirs, you're pretty much guaranteed that this stuff is genuine. Because there's no tourist tchotchke made in China stuff to be seen here. Can't wait too long to drink your water here in Iraq, walking around on the streets. I've been carrying this one for about 20 minutes. I just took a sip and it's like, tastes like it's just been boiled. Mmm. <laughs> Guys, we've been stopped here in the leather market, which we'll explore in a second for an interview here. Guys, look at this gorgeous specimen of Iraqi hairstyles. Incredible, bro. Your hair is amazing. Mashallah. All right, guys, let's get some coffee. Look at his whole getup. I love it. Oh, what is it? Ah, okay. All right, thought it was coffee? It's tamarind juice. <laughs> Shukran. All right, let's give it a try, tamarind juice. Interesting. Not my favorite. It has kind of a chalky texture, actually. But, hey, good to try. All right, guys, we're heading into a cafe called Shah Bando. Right behind me to get out of the sun for a second, maybe get some coffee, wake up a little bit. In 2007, it was a big bomb in... Uh, Motanabi Street here. So the owner of this cafe, he lost three or five of his sons. Oh my gosh. Five of his sons. And one bomb. So sad. But the place is really... Uh, I like the atmosphere inside. Okay, cool. And Let's I, go. I hope you like it too. Hi, how are you? <laughs> Good. Guys, this is crazy. I love places like this. Tons of pictures on the walls. Hazy air filled with shisha hookah smoke. Wow. What's up, guys? What's up, yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I like your shirt, New York. Yes. That's where I'm from. <laughs> Look at all that sugar. Let's give it a try. Whoa. Interesting. It's like a pretty unique flavor. It's different than what I've had before. It's kind of uh, sweet and tangy. You want to be on the video? Yeah. It's okay. What's your name? 
Samma. Samma. Samma, yeah. Okay, guys, this is Samma. She's originally from Iraq, but now lives in Canada. Yes. Saskatoon. Saskatoon. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> and just back visiting for a while? Yes, yeah. For, for, for a while, actually. Nice. Yeah. Are you going to go around Iraq or just back then? Yeah, so we're even this time we're planning to go just around our area. Just, uh -huh. just, just drive around and visit other places. Nice. Yeah, just explore all of them. Awesome. Yeah. Maybe we'll run into you again. Yeah. <laughs> Alright guys, we got a little power outage here in the cafe. Maybe you can hear me better now that the fan behind me is off. So, this happens this all happens the time? This happens quite often. Yeah. yeah. The power just goes out and then it'll come back on. Any second. Yeah. Any minute, actually. Yeah, I'm famous. Yeah, yeah famous. you're gonna be famous. Say hello. Say hello. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, this happens quite often. But it, it usually comes on pretty quickly, yeah. right after. <laughs> Yeah, Hi tell them anything everyone. you want. You should visit Iraq. It's so Come beautiful. Come to Iraq. Come to it. Very beautiful. I'm hoping a lot of you guys consider that after uh, seeing all these videos, hopefully. Beautiful place. And lots of friendly people. <laughs> guys, these guys are getting a real kick out of uh, our pronunciation of Shakumaku, which means what's up in Iraqi <laughs> Arabic. <laughs> What? Allah. Allah. Atragne. Atragne. Ali. Ali. <laughs> uh, disclaimer, I don't know what I just said. I'm being serenaded. Amazing. Well done. Thank you. <laughs> you have a great voice. Really. So many friendly people. It's my favorite part of any of this. Any traveling, visiting new places. Just moments like that in the cafe, meeting all those hilarious, friendly, awesome people. It's priceless. Alright guys, it's 12.45. Heat update. Uh, it's hot. <laughs> it's very hot. It's kind of crazy because it's like this dry heat. But when the wind blows, it feels like you're taking a hair dryer to your face. Like, it just burns your face. Guys, we're stopping real quick at Haj Zabala Juice. It was founded in 1900. It's apparently a pretty famous spot for juice. Let's go check it out. Wow. Thank you. Uh, every president and uh, every king of Iraq had been here and drank some juice from this exact shop. So there they are, guys. All of the leaders of Iraq who have all come to this juice shop. From the kings all the way to Saddam. There he is and beyond. Some traditional Iraqi hats here with the wonderful owner of this historic juice shop. I think the juice is coming soon. Shukran. Thank you. Perfect. So good. Thank you. Oh my gosh, it's so cold. So sweet and refreshing. I'm so happy. <laughs> There's another one of Saddam. And now, I believe we are off to have some lunch, and I'm very excited. Orguzi, which is a, a chunk of meat with, uh, with, with, uh, with white rice, or dimembagilla, uh, green rice, and, the, uh, and, and two sides, two options of side dishes. All right, we got some dolma. This is uh, vegetables stuffed with rice. Looks delicious. Here we go. Oh wow, oh that was God. so quick. Okay, You're thank you. Welcome. <laughs> wow, I was right in the middle of trying Tolma. And uh, this just arrived for me. An entire fried fish. So good. Alright, check out this table. It filled up so quickly. Amazing. Here's the green rice with papa beans and dill. Oh my god. I love anything with dill. That is incredible. We're kind of sharing everything. We don't each have plates. So you kind of just go in with your spoon, take your bite, continue.
Alrighty guys, we just took about a two hour break at the hotel. We're now stopping for coffee before we continue on our tour for the day. And check this place out. It's called Alibaba. I bet most of you would not expect to find a place like this here in Baghdad. Shukran. Thank you. Check it out. So bougie. And on we go. Yalla. All right, guys, so now we're on our way to Tak Kasra, which is a Persian monument on the outskirts of Baghdad. Whoa! This is the site. Oh my gosh. Yes. This is a cool time of day to be here. Actually. Yeah, it's beautiful. About this building, it is the panorama. It was built in 1989. Why it was built? Because uh, it used as a panorama museum for the battle of Al Qadisiyya, which is a famous battle between Arab and Persian, where Arab defeated Persian, uh, the expansion of Islam. So Saddam, when he, uh, when he thought that he beat Iran in 1988, after the war, what he called the, the, the battle, the war between Iran and Iraq, Al-Qadisiyya too, <laughs> because, you know, obviously Iran, which is the modern state of Persia, so he thought that he defeated Persia again. Why he put it here? the panorama because it's just like in front of the throne of the palace of the Persian palace when they invaded uh, uh, Iraq before Islam even. Wow, so this is pretty neglected as you can see. It's basically in ruins. Before 2003, it was really protected, well preserved this place. But after 2003, what people, uh, uh, they just the reaction of the hate of Saddam, they showed it here. They came and they stole everything. They destroyed everything because uh, they thought it's one of the castle of Saddam. This place meant to him something. So he just wanted to revenge of Saddam and his time and what he did to the people. Wow. It is really dark in here. We're on our way up to the top. It's really in pretty bad shape. Just use your lights, please. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Guys, this edge right here drops straight down to five flights below. I'm so afraid of heights. This is the elevator shaft. Elevator shaft, huh, okay, that makes sense. This is crazy. Okay, look at this view, oh my goodness. Yeah, and guys, here's the view from the other side. Look, you got all these kids just playing out here on this open kind of uh, lot. And this thing is just open. I mean, there's no security or checkpoint or anything to get here. This is over the edge, way taller than it looks from the ground. But yeah, anyone can just walk in here. Let's check out the third side. Oh, wow. Really beautiful. Yeah, it's so green. Beautiful. Palm trees, you got kids playing there on the roof. All right, guys, here we go. All right guys, here it is. This is the Arch of Tessaphon at Tak Kasra. It's the largest unreinforced brick vault ever constructed in the history of the world. It's closed off right now because it's over a thousand years old and it's at risk of collapse. So this is what it used to look like originally, way back a thousand years ago. Oh my goodness. Now all that stands is the arch and part of the left side. Alrighty guys, it's a little bit later now. We've made our way back to the city of Baghdad. And check out this area we're in, it's so modern. And we are going into Al Rif Cafe. Let's go check it out. Cigars. And we order on a tablet. Pretty cool. Boom, look at that, English menu on a tablet here in Baghdad. All right, I made it back 
to the hotel. Just had a much needed shower, so I'm feeling cooled off and really just feeling so happy to be here. That was such an incredible first day. Met so many incredible people, had so much great food and just, I, it was just amazing exploring this city. So much history, so much to be discovered really. I feel like we're only scratching the surface. I'm so excited for the next few days to come. We're gonna be exploring more of Baghdad, then we're gonna be going to Babylon, Karbala, Basra and more so stay tuned if you guys want to stay up to date on my travels through Iraq Go ahead and check out my Instagram and if you're enjoying these videos, please 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 don't forget to subscribe It really helps me out and keeps me bringing you guys more videos from amazing places Like this so thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you tomorrow in the next one Bye. -bye.